Hi friends, I am very happy to see you here. I am Uma Shankar Pandey and this is the Dr. USP channel. I host videos on media, communication and research on this channel. This is the third video on qualitative data analysis software Atlas TI. Memo writing is a very important part of the qualitative research process where we need to write our ideas, our research questions, our analysis and our reflections. Let us see Mastering Memo Writing and Coding Schemes with Atlas TI, a comprehensive qualitative data analysis guide. In this video, we will see how to import coding schemes from an Excel file. So I have created this code book on an Excel file. And this is how we need to create code books if we need to import it to Atlas TI. So the first column is for the code. The second column is the description and all the other columns are about code groups. Even if you do not name this uh, first row with the headers, Atlas TI will take these columns in this sequence. The first is code, the second is description, the third is code group, etc. So I have this uh, 22 codes and I have put them into these five groups. So one column can only be for one group. So this is how I have created this code book. So we'll start with the same project that we created in our earlier two videos. We have 17 documents there. We have 17 codes here. Here I have information about all the codes. Number 491 here means that 491 quotations have been coded with this word sentiment and zero means there are no links here with sentiment and another code. Let's go to this import and export tab and we can import code book here. So let's click on to code book, import code book and it's an Excel format. So we'll click this. Here we can specify the folder where my code book is. It asks me whether it contains headers and we know from the Excel file that the first row was a header. So we'll import. So the code book has been imported here and now we can see there are 39 codes here. And the code groups have also increased. So if you remember from the Excel file that we've, we had these media types and we had parties and we had uh, campaign and voters and so on. And all these things are here. So all the codes that we created in the code book have been imported here. And some of them, they are a part of groups. And they've all been coded with a different color. I can change the color here as well. change color this is black by default i can change it to gray we can use these groups for filters so parties will have affiliation ideology influence and perception i'll check all this and i can change the color this is black i can change it to yellow for example issues i can change it to another color Let's make it pink. So now when I go to my codes, I can see that there are different colors and based on colors, I can identify the groups that they belong to. So the groups, as we saw in the first video, can be regarded as a part, kind of a theme. So if I open the code manager, these are the groups that I can see here. The ones with a yellow mark, they belong to some group. So this economic, it belongs to the issues group. The celebrities, it belongs to the campaign group. The advertising, it belongs to the media type group. So we have already identified themes here. For example, if I put uh, Delhi and uh, cast, for example, and uh, this one as well, uh, election. I can create a new group there. I can just create a new group from selection. I can name it local issues uh, there's another way of uh, adding hierarchies there so we can just have a new code let's name it uh, local issues i've created a code here now i can add the th ones that i want onto local issues so i can move code under delhi under local issues so as we can see there, we have created a hierarchy there. So this local issues is now 
the category and under that we have, we have Delhi and under local issues we can even bring in uh, caste for example it asks me move caste under local issues so you can bring it here so now we can see local issues is a category and under that we have two subcategories so we can create these hierarchies inside this coding group as well and if i just open the codes again i can see that these are the codes the ones which have a triangle there for example sentiment has three categories inside it if I want, I can create some of these things or these higher order things into a group. So I can take the sentiment and I can take a person, which is also a higher order group. I can take this. I can even create a new folder out of these selections. So I can call them major issues. So if I open codes, inside this folder there are major issues inside this folder i can find out those two things the ones about person and then about the sentiments so that is one way of creating this hierarchy if i want i can use these groups to uh, describe themes or if i have to describe the categories inside categories the person this is the category and inside that we have the subcategories of uh, Amit Shah, Gandhi, Mamta, Modi, Narendra Modi, Sonia, etc. Or inside sentiment, we have subcategories. So inside a category, we have these subcategories. So when you have this kind of a figure, which is uh, different from the codes, this is this suggests that there are further subcategories there. So we can create these hierarchies inside Atlas Ti, and uh, we can also create folders as we have seen. So we can either create groups or we create another code and within that code we create those categories. So we can create subcategories inside a major category. So the codes which have this yellow mark there, they belong to a group. So if I see this, if I click on this advertising, I can see that this belongs to the media type group. And if you remember, this was the code that we had imported from our Excel code book. Similarly, if I click on celebrities here, it tells me it's a part of the campaign. But the ones which do not have these uh, yellow marks on the top, for example, if I click on to negative, it, it is not a part of any group. But these are subcategories which are a part of this category sentiment. So it's very important to understand these differences. And this will become very useful when we are going to analyze things. And while analyzing these uh, groups, they have a very important role to play. One very important thing that we can do with uh, Atlas TI is the use of memos. So we go to home, we add new entities and we can add a new memo there. Memos can be of very many types. They can be about research questions. They can be a research diary. They can be about our reflections as we go along. It can be about explanation of code. So when we go to uh, the actual writing, these memos will play a very important role. For example, I can call it research question one i'll create it the moment i click it i get this interface which is very similar to any document processing interface i i, I can format it in paragraphs i can have uh, numberings i can insert a picture i can even insert uh, hyperlinks i can insert date and time quotations generally it's advisable to uh, insert a date and time because it gives us an idea about when this memo was created then we can write about the memo itself. Uh, so this is a research question one. So I can just write about what is the research question. Which issues were highlighted by politicians? I can, as I said, we can uh, insert hyperlinks also. So I can hyperlink election. And if I click onto this, it will go onto the website that has been hyperlinked as you can see i just need to control click to go to the website i can insert pictures or i can insert other queries there so i just need to save this so i will save this memo rq1 if i now go on to this project explorer i can see that one memo has been created here rq1 we can 
link these memos to quotations so I can uh, open any of those documents where I think that this uh, memo will have an important role to play. So I can link this particular memo to this quote here. So I just need to click and drag it from here to here. And I can see this memo has been included here. There are other kinds of memos that we can introduce here. So the same way, we'll just go to new entities, new memo. Let's call it uh, research ideas. As we go along and whenever any idea comes up, I can just create this more negative campaigning in process. I can just save it once again. I have a memo manager here, here as well. It shows me what those memos are. So the first one was about research questions. I can just uh, set type and I can say that it's a research question type. So this appears as a research question type. The second one, I can set its type as uh, ideas. So there, ca there can be a number of memo types and we can link uh, these memos to codes, we can link them to documents, we can link them to quotations. In fact, we can add quotations there whenever we want and I can insert quotation here. Good thing about this memo is uh, I can export them as reports. So I can create reports out of all my memos. So I can use both these memos and I can talk about the content, about the memos and the codes and the quotations and I can create a report there. And that can be used when I'm writing my final report. And we can uh, link it to codes as well as I said. So we can just have these memos. And for example, if I open these codes, I can just drop one of those memos onto the code. I go to the codes. For example, if I think that this research question is there about this neutral, I can add this. I have linked this neutral code to the memo. I can show that in the network also. So here, this research question where I've added one code and it is linked to the code neutral. We'll deal more with uh, these networks in the next video. Thanks for staying along friends. As always, it was a delight having you here. I'll be back with another video very soon. Till then, have a great time.